the dark web. Sounds scary, right? Like ice cream to someone with lactose intolerance. You might be curious, even if it does come with a few risks. Let's get the lights back on. So if your inquisitive nature has gotten the best of you, I've got you covered. Today, I will teach you how to access the dark web safely. Okay, despite us using the word safely, don't take the dark web lightly. It's full of a lot of dangerous and morally reprehensible stuff. So it's not like Disneyland, but it might be close if you put landmines everywhere. Before we embark on our little dark adventure, we're going to tell you exactly what the dark web is, what tools are necessary to be safe on the dark web, what to do once you've accessed it, and the safest spaces you can spend your time without sacrificing your firstborn to the devil. For starters, download VPNs like NordVPN, ExpressVPN, and Surfshark. Stock up on antivirus software like Norton, Bitdefender, or McAfee, and only use Tor, which we'll tell you about in this video, which kind of makes it like a Triforce of online security. Discounted links to everything, everything, in the description box below, so go on, click them, and leave me a comment. I read all of these while I gently weep in bed at 2 a.m. You can't ever be too safe though, so continue watching to see the other best practices when accessing the dark web. Let's see what you're getting into. First question, what is the dark web? The dark web is not what happens when you turn your brightness down to 20% and open Chrome. Oh, that was a bad joke. Instead, it's an entire area of the internet not accessible through normal means. You can't find dark web pages using search engines like Google or Bing because they aren't indexed, meaning they don't show up on search engines. You also can't access these pages using regular browsers like Chrome or Firefox. Sorry guys, you're gonna have to sit this one out. <laughs> you can consider the dark web the bottom layer of the net, or as Mary Berry would say, the soggy bottom of the internet. This is alongside the web we know, otherwise known as the surface web, and the second layer, the deep web. The deep web is where you often find company-specific websites like payroll sites. You need organizational credentials to access this part of the web. The dark web emphasizes anonymity and anti-censorship ideals. Those who live in restrictive countries like China use the service to discuss illegal ideas. However, because of its focus on anonymous communication, it's a central hub for illegal activities. Drugs, weapons, identities, and credit card numbers are all sold here. Because it's all unregulated, you can't get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Does that mean I can get some cocaine? Oh yeah! To make sure you stay safe while downloading cocaine, make sure you have a good VPN and antivirus. You can find both of these and some discounts for them in the description below. Our recommendations are NordVPN, ExpressVPN, and Surfshark. Ow. Of course, the dark web isn't illegal, so it's not unlawful to access. However, accessing the dark web can put you on some government lists, which is why you need to access it safely. Again, don't stick around too long and be careful where you go, because the dark web is a dangerous place. So first, let's dig into the tools necessary to access the dark web safely. First, you need access to a VPN. A virtual private network encrypts all of your connection and traffic logs. This is important because the second tool that you need to access the dark web doesn't do well in hiding itself. So your ISP and local government can see you whenever you browse. There are many great VPNs that you can use, like Surfshark or ExpressVPN, which are perfect. Ultimately, you need a VPN with a kill switch to ensure your browsing isn't leaked. For our demonstration, we will be using NordVPN. For any of those VPNs, you can find discounts in our description. The second tool that you need is the Tor browser. You can download the Tor browser from the Tor project website. Using Tor is sort of like running full speed in a suit of armor. It isn't very fast, but you are secure. The Tor browser and many VPNs are available across all major operating systems. So these steps will work for Windows, Apple, iOS, Android, or Linux systems. The Tor browser makes use of the Onion Routing Network, much like Multihop on your VPNs. It connects to numerous worldwide nodes of fellow Tor users, similar to P2P torrenting. The difference between this and VPNs is that you have no control over where the routing goes. Neither do the nodes on this network, making it impossible to trace your connection. Interesting point, the US government made the Tor network as a way to have spies anonymously communicate. So consider it a modern version of the D.A.R.E. program. 
Do you know how to stop kids from doing drugs? Daring them to do it. What are harder drugs? Oh, you'll find out, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> but in all honesty, the Tor Onion Network is pretty good. The logic of needing more users to hide your activity makes it easier to stay anonymous. After the programs are set up, immediately activate your VPN. You'll want to do so before opening up the Tor browser. You might notice the Onion over VPN option on NordVPN. Using this might seem logical, but it's overkill when using the Tor browser. Yes, there is such thing as too much Onion, especially if you're going on a date. So uh, any regular server will do. Once your VPN and Tor are active, you are finally ready to access the dark web. Start by opening up your Tor browser and using its standard search engine. It relies on DuckDuckGo, which is secure, but has similar troubles to other search engines. Instead, you will type in something like the best Tor sites to go to. You'll see many listicle articles you can use to find entry sites. To host a website on the dark web comes with many risks. So to remain hidden and prevent consistent tracking, websites on the Onion Network are a random combination of letters and numbers followed by dot onion. I don't think the world government would approve of getdrugshere.com. Now, of course, it's impossible to memorize this nonsense, so you need to gain access to one of two things. A dark web site list or a dark web search engine. One example of a dark web site list is Daniel, which is a weird name for a site. Like naming your refrigerator Tim or something. Anyway, Daniel provides links to 7,000 sites. Because Tor sites frequently change links, you can also use a regular search engine and type in Daniel Tor website. For search engines, Torch is the best one available on the dark web. As another reminder, there's a lot of questionable stuff on these sites. While it can be fascinating and is excellent for staying anonymous online, don't use this service for too long. To find out why, here are some quick tips to consider when using the dark web. First, note that the dark web comes from volunteer nodes. These nodes or computers are found worldwide. When you use the Tor network, you become one of those nodes. Users who might not be fine, upstanding citizens like yourself, are routed through you. This means someone else might be masking using your IP. Because node assignments are completely random, you never know where you or someone else might end up. While the Tor plus VPN combo makes sure this information isn't out there, this can create that being on a list thing. So make sure your kill switch is on. Next, talking with anonymous users is an option. Dan's chat, an aspect of that Daniel website we mentioned earlier, is one such hub. So be extra careful when communicating with these people. Despite Kidney Puncher 72 seeming like a decent fellow on chat, they might not be that way when you meet them in reality. Best to avoid anyone who punches kidneys. You also want to avoid providing any private credentials. This part of the web is where those credentials are stolen and sold to the highest bidder. So if you willingly provide your personal information, you're in for a bad time. But what if you want to download something? Well, you run into the risk of having illegal files on your computer. There's also a chance that you might get a virus. This is a great segue into our next point, ensuring you have an antivirus. Real-time protection is the name of the game here, and you can find a list of providers and our review in the description below. The dark web can be a unique and fascinating place, but much like exploring space for the first time, it becomes more challenging if you don't have your helmet on. So knowing that, here are some things that you can do with Tor that won't get you in trouble. First, you can access ProPublica. This is a journalism site that won the Pulitzer in 2016. It focuses on honest investigative journalism regarding corrupt individuals in politics and other heavy subjects. You can educate yourself with an online scientific database known as SciHub. It includes research on advanced subjects from unbiased scientific resources. You can access the Facebook Onion site, enabling those who live in oppressive countries to do social media. However, remember that thing that we said about sharing user credentials? Yeah, don't do that. But since Facebook isn't known for privacy, it's like driving a van around with free cocaine spray painted on the side. You can also sign up for anonymous email services through ProtonMail and RiseUp. RiseUp requires an invitation code. You can increase your anonymity when signing up for online services through these emails. You can also access the Tunnels website and see explorers go through unused underground tunnels. While it is illegal and dangerous for the users, you won't go to jail for watching. So as a quick reminder, always have your VPN on before using Tor. Be careful of what websites you access 
and don't stay on there for extended periods. Thanks for watching this video. Goodbye.